Ahoy there, my name's Beth and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. This week, more painting, but a heating system as well. I think I'm off. This week I've made a bit of an error when I recorded because I had the radio playing in the background and the copyright holder of the well-known song that was playing has lodged a copyright claim. So I need to replace the audio for that section. So you'll just have me as a voiceover. So we're in the engine room. There's not much space, of course. But this is all a bit of a mess. So we're going to finish off decommissioning the cables that run into the boat. Look at this. This was the old 24 volt supply. And all of this mess was in the back of the boat as well. I mean, it, it's not someone doing something bad. It's just the function of an old boat. And the constant, you know, we need to have this, so we're adding this, so we add that. So these are the HT leads for the the engine. So we're obviously going to leave that, but there's a battery charger. So we're going to leave that as well. You can see it's a Dutch barge. So that means I can charge the batteries for the engine. So I can start the engine, but everything else needs to come out. And these cables are actually, uh, yeah, they're old. So we're going to cut those out. Here's a good example of how confusing the wiring was in here. So, I don't know if you can see, but there's a cable here with a red and a blue, and the blue goes to blue and the red goes to black. So how can you trace that through the boat? The answer is, you can't. Okay, so now I know the battery is just completely separate. And I've got my starting cables there, absolutely fine. I've got my charger, and I uh, might use a different charger, but I've got a charger. And uh, so all of this now can come out now. That's good. Um, I've stripped all of this um, this cable out of there and um, and you can see by looking at it it's, it's really hard to track anything down so um so that's good it's good that that's gone uh, and nothing's labeled up and it's just a product of lots of years of stuff but the reason really why I'm doing this right now is because I've just cleared out this bay here and this is where the uh, the batteries are there's a couple of big lead acid batteries there and um, but this is where the um, the heating unit is going to go and the clarifier. So uh, hopefully on this side we've got enough space to put the Cabola boiler in, put the clarifier in, and uh, then we've got hot water.
finished taking the tape off, the big ball of tape that I've used to mask off the, the white on top of the red. And it's been a bit of a success, but not amazing. To be honest, I wouldn't have got a really fine line. And then some parts, if it was all like this, it would be absolutely perfect. But there's some bits where the red has been taken off by the tape. And it's just because the red paint wasn't wasn't hard it's still a bit tacky um but uh, but it looks okay and i can touch it up with a little brush um but uh yeah and the uh, the sides of the coach roof are done in uh, cream uh, which i'll show you in a bit and they're beautiful and i'm really happy i wasn't happy with the white but i am happy with the cream now so it's all good so I'm going to make some dinner and see if I can do this with one hand. Oh, again, it's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to make some dinner. Um, I've got some aubergine soaking in some brine, so I'm going to barbecue that. And uh, I'm going to have a, a beer, a can of beer, and uh, I think I'll go to bed. I'm shattered. Yeah, that's it for today. Um, just let me clear, there's a bit of swarf on the other side, I'll just um, I think I might be able to pick it off. Yeah, it's got it. Paint scraper, not the right tool for the job. Anyway. Okay, and... Okay, got it. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. 
So those two fittings down there will go to the rear cabin radiator um, and uh, but that's later on we can add those and then we've got the uh, the cold water in the hot water out and the circuit for the radiators there as well and uh, yeah and there's an expansion tank just down here under my feet and on the other side will be where the um, uh, where the chlorophyll will live uh, and that's going in on Monday. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of it's fitted. Uh, it's not been commissioned yet because um, uh, obviously you don't have the radiators in. I don't have any of the uh, the plumbing in for for the uh, hot water system. Um, but uh, but it's ready to go when we do. Um, so that's uh, that's another big thing that I needed to get done. And so I'm really pleased that that big thing has been done now. Um, so. Left on the big list is uh, are the, the remaining yard works, um, but we're really going there, really making progress, so yeah, it's good, good to see. had the um the central heating system fitted and the hot water system fitted uh, and i'm here with uh, with pete from marine heating limited and um, so pete what is it you've fitted for us today okay so we've done, fitted a kb40 kilua fire control kb40 yeah. uh, it's a blue flame burner very efficient doesn't generate any soot so it actually needs nice. slightly less servicing um, nice. about 92 percent efficient right which is okay. pretty good for a marine boiler incredibly reliable reasonably priced nice <laughs> so what we've got it's uh the main boiler body with a circulation pump on the side and then going towards the back uh, we've got a diverter valve which is the silver box yeah 
and that directs water either to the calorifier so you can have hot water or to your central heating it doesn't do right. both at the same time right um, but you can do have either or so even during the summer you can just have the hot water from the calorifier you right. don't have to run the heating through the boat as well yeah that's good which is yeah. quite useful independent control you can have it on timers or no. whatever you want so yeah great um, nice simple straightforward system you've got a flow and return going through the bulkheads on the larger pipes um, and then above that you've got the two smaller pipes which is a cold water feed into the calorifier and then the hot water feed back out of the calorifier all nice and simple all straightforward just as a make life easy we've also taken off the cold water feed there's a filling point to go onto the boiler so if you uh, change yes. radiators or anything like that you need to drain the system down but you don't have to go and get a hose to top it back up again Shit. you just turn the tap on and it will automatically repressurize Amazing. and then you just bleed and away you go so great just makes yeah. life really simple yeah yeah that's good we like that yeah yep. so the calorifier over this side so calorifier people get confused about what what calorifier is because it sounds like a really fancy word but it is a fancy word yeah. it's basically it's a hot water tank yeah because it's a marine thing we charge more for it we get a longer word right I nice that's yeah that sounds it's everything it. like that with boats yeah. yeah so this is a twin coil calorifier uh, you can see the connections on this end for coming off the boiler the two larger pipes mm. and then the two smaller pipes like before is a cold water feed going in at the bottom hot water feed coming out at the top and it's a twin coil calorifier, so on the rear calorifier there's two spare uh, loops uh, or a spare loop which at some point can be connected up to the engine to give you heat when you run hot water when you run your engine. Nice, so, so, that, so in the cooling system it can just run straight through yeah, that yeah. So cooling you system. Yeah, just tap that into the system wherever it's appropriate to do so. Yeah. Uh, also difficult to see but there is a one kilowatt immersion attached to it as well so that if you're connected to shore power um, and you don't want to use your boiler generally it's cheaper yeah. to use a boiler because electricity costs on marinas are quite expensive yeah yeah um, but it's a, it's, it's a choice it's also there as a backup if you run yeah. out of diesel then you've got you can still get hot water yeah yeah uh, so only one kilowatt it's not going to drain all of your power coming off the sure. post even on a 16 amp it's only going to take about four amps yeah so. and you can run both the heating and the hot water from that system no you can't right one kilowatt just will only just about heat that tank so okay so you have some hot water yeah, yeah. but it gives right. you hot water okay yeah that's good it's, it's, yeah. it's get out of jail free car yeah yeah exactly um, for a hot shower when you need yeah, it that's yeah. good yeah and that's it it's a nice simple straightforward system um i think it's going to be controlled with nest and the wi-fi yeah yeah that sounds um, yeah. which is really nice it means when you're away you can turn the heating on make sure the system's working yeah before yeah. you come back if you've been away for a while yeah, you can yeah. turn the heating on mm -hmm. by the time you get home you've got a tank of hot water and the Lovely. boat's nice and warm perfect that's all there you go. need that's all. yeah so to make space for the uh, the chlorifier down there um we've decommissioned uh, an old fuel tank and the fuel tank was a um was this one 40 litre diesel fuel tank and it was a drip feed for the old um, oil stove um, that we used to be on the boat uh, and that was actually decommissioned or removed by the previous owners uh, and they replaced it with a wood-burning stove but the um, the, the pipe effectively the fuel feed was always in the boat um, so it had this kind of, uh, now and again if you knock the tap it would start dripping diesel into onto the floor, that was not ideal. So I'm really pleased to say that I've um, removed the tank uh, and, uh, and Pete has removed all the plumbing uh, for that tank um, and so we've decommissioned it, so it's actually out of the boat now. But I kind of wanted to show you this, for number one it was on a little angle iron bracket uh, there was a bit of oriented strand board on top of that, rested on top, and then this tank was just sitting on top of it, on its side, not secured other than by its pipes. Also, this is the this is the fuel filler. So the there was an uplift pump from the main diesel tank that lifted fuel up into this one. Um, there is no overflow back to the tank, the main tank. So if you pump, if you filled it, it would just keep filling and filling to the bilge. But also, it's just a plastic push fit fitting. I mean, you wouldn't even put that in your kitchen sink, would you? So there's one thing, one more thing I wanted to show you, and it's a, it's a really lovely thing. So first of all, some context. This is the, um, 
the shore power um, socket uh, and it is a um, 230 volt um, 16 amp socket so it's the old 16 amp type I say old because I'd actually quite like to upgrade to 32 amp now the where I am the shore line the shore power um, isn't 32 amp yet but it might be and it might be some place to visit so this is going to be the temporary system uh, the providing power for just now for some sockets indoors but the new system will be connected to this socket and look at that lovely one so this is a, um, a 32 amp um, new style socket uh, but it's also it is weatherproof properly weatherproof so there's a bayonet fitting on there and some gaskets and the um, the plug as well has a, a bezel ring a, a screw ring which will um, connect to that really well so even when it's connected it'd be properly waterproof uh, weatherproof I should say um, so yeah so that's great so in this corner it's been fit on this side because this corner is where the inverter and, uh, and everything is going to live underneath the uh, control panel so um, yeah exciting stuff <laughs>